and gentlemen, good afternoon. Please welcome Sudhir Hasby. Hello, everybody. I'm Sudhir Hasby. I'm the director of product for data analytics in GCP. Uh, thank you for coming to this session. I know it's just after lunch or around lunch time, so I hope I am not going to bore you too much in this session. We'll keep it exciting. Um, so let's get started with the session. The key thing is most of the f folks in, in, in the audience or outside uh, know Google from the search box. Now, the first experience people have with Google is go to the search box, search for a term, and you get some interesting and, and uh, results that you're looking for. Actually, behind the scenes, when you search for anything on, on, uh, on, the, on the search box, there's a lot of infrastructure. There's a lot of analytics that's going on. We are one of the largest organizations that collects massive amounts of data and analyzes it and uses that. It's not just search, though. If you look at it, we have more than seven products. And I know I heard in keynote earlier today, we may have an eighth one with Drive, which will hit uh, eight uh, a billion users, active users monthly uh, uh, going forward. The, the key here is big data is in our DNA. We leverage data. We leverage machine learning for giving those amazing experiences in all of these products. And the way we do that is through internal technology that we have built. If you think about uh, Dremel, which we use internally for all our analytics, BigQuery is actually an enterprise version of that same piece of technology that's available for enterprises. So what we are doing here is bringing the technology that we have invested over years and making it available for our uh, customers in the cloud. Um, if you think about it, data across the world is growing. It will be, what, 163 zettabytes by 2025. And as data sets grow within organizations, you want to have infrastructure. You want to have analytics capability that can actually process that amount of data. Uh, just a data point, one of our customers, Zulili, um, when they started uh, their, uh, their data collection and their uh, streaming analytics pipelines, they used to collect like 50 million events a day. Now they are up to 5 billion within 18 months. So what happens is as you start seeing value from your data, you will collect more and more. But you want ability and infrastructure that can actually seamlessly scale as your needs grow within your organizations. Similarly, there was a, a survey done, MIT survey was done, about machine learning and AI, how many customers are using it, how it was going. The, the key thing was the organizations that are actually using AI are able to make 2x faster decisions, uh, 5x faster decisions. They are able to do two times more data-driven decisions within the organization, and also 3x faster execution on the decisions that they are making. So overall, if you think about it, machine learning, AI is going to be critical for all your organizations. And then uh, the key point, though, is if your organization is not good at analytics, it's never going to be great at AI. So the first thing, the foundation, you're, you have to have great foundation on analytics, data, how do you process data, how do you analyze data, and then you can think about how you go ahead and do machine learning on top of that data, leverage AI for, for differentiation. If you look at the numbers, though, uh, less than 1% of world's unstructured data is actually being used for uh, analytics or analysis, analysis today. Less than 50% of structured data is analyzed today within organizations. So what is our approach to this? If you look at Google, what are we uh, doing? There are four key things. One, we are focusing on uh, infrastructure or, or solutions that allow you to go ahead and focus on analytics, not infrastructure. We'll talk more about that. The second is developing comprehensive solutions. So we know customers need the whole portfolio of solutions to go ahead and do analysis. We are focusing on end-to-end, -end, all the components that you need. End-to-end -end ML lifecycle, and we'll look at that quickly. And then innovative and open. Uh, being an open cloud, making sure you have options with open source software so that you can go ahead and run the workloads the way you want to run is super critical for us. And we have a lot of investments that we do in making sure we, uh, we promote that. Uh, let's talk about what does focusing on analytic means and not on infrastructure. If you think about us, if you're doing analysis with BigQuery, which is our, our data cloud-scale data warehousing product, you can get started within seconds. You basically can bring your data sets and start analyzing instantly. The key thing is, if you're not using a serverless product like, like BigQuery or Dataflow, 
you will have to worry about monitoring, you have to worry about performance tuning, infrastructure, how many nodes do I need, what kind of cluster size do I need, how do you performance tune, none of that is going to be a problem if you're focused on serverless. So that's what our focus is. We want to provide you with infrastructure that automatically scales, gives you ability to do analysis, and you don't have to worry about anything. Just bring your data, start doing analysis on it. Let's talk about the second point, right? End-to-end -end comprehensive solutions. The big thing is, if you think about analysis, it actually starts with ingestion. How do I get my data? The first step is, how do I get my streaming data? We have lots of customers using massive amount of streaming uh, events that are coming uh, to them, and how do you scale this infrastructure seamlessly? So Cloud Pop Sub is our solution that allows you to do uh, millions of events per second that you can collect and do analysis on them. Similarly, a lot of our customers use uh, different Google products, like for example, AdWords and uh, DoubleClick and all of those uh, for advertising purposes. What we have done is we made it really easy for customers who want to use uh, Google Cloud for marketing analytics. Within a few clicks, you can literally go ahead and get your AdWords data, your DoubleClick data, into BigQuery for analysis uh, seamlessly. Similarly, uh, IoT is super critical. You saw some amazing announcements today morning with uh, uh, Edge TPU and, and uh, Cloud IoT Core. We have a Cloud IoT Core, so if you are interested in collecting IoT data, you can seamlessly collect that and actually leverage the whole platform from that. So we've covered the ingestion. If you think about reliable data processing and streaming pipelines, uh, we have multiple options for our customers, right? One is data flow uh, with Beam. So Beam an open so is an open source SDK for you to build batch and streaming pipelines with the same programming model. Um, you can use Dataflow, which allows you to automatically scale, build large-scale data processing pipelines. Great for developers. But we also realize that a lot of our customers have uh, in-house capabilities with Spark and Hadoop, and they love uh, Spark. I used to use Spark before in my previous role, so I love Spark too. So for that, we have managed Hadoop and Spark environment with Dataproc. And then um, for analysts, and we know a lot of our analyst community, which is familiar with data, also wants to do data wrangling, also wants to do data preparation, so that they know best before the data is used uh, what kind of analysis they want to do and clean up the data. So we have cloud data prep for, for those, uh, those audience. After that, once your data is ready, you want to do analysis at scale, you want to build your data lakes, you can actually use uh, GCS, Google Cloud Storage, to go ahead and put all your structured, unstructured data and then process it. Or you can use our cloud scale data warehouse with BigQuery to put all this data at petabyte scale and then do analysis on top of it. And once you have analysis platform ready for you, then for advanced analytics, you can use ML Engine, you can use uh, TensorFlow. Uh, for visualizations, you can use Data Studio. We'll see some of the new enhancements we are, uh, we are making available on that. And also Sheets. A lot of our customers, especially G Suite customers, who use Sheets every day, we are making some enhancements on that to easily make data from BigQuery and other places available uh, uh, today. So that's there. If you think about ML lifecycle, this is the whole lifecycle, right? You have ML lifecycle is you start from ingestion, you have to explore, you have to prepare, you have to pre-process, then you start the process of training, hyper-tuning, testing, and predictions. There's a whole lifecycle that has to happen. And what we provide is a whole suite of products that allow you to go to every one of those processes. But what we are also doing is making it very easy for you to do machine learning. And you heard some of the announcements we did earlier today. And I will go a bit more detail into that. And actually, we have an amazing demo for you later uh, in, the, in the session. Uh, from a customer momentum perspective, uh, that's our portfolio. We are seeing tremendous growth in the data analytics side uh, with our customers. A lot of customers using the whole portfolio across industry verticals, from financial services to retail, from gaming to media entertainment, all, all across the board, manufacturing, all across the board, we are seeing tremendous growth in um, our, our uh, data analytics capability being used in different organizations. And it's across the different sizes of uh, data sets, too. So you heard earlier today, Twitter talk, uh, talked about moving their large-scale Hadoop deployment. I think, he, I think it was mentioned 300 petabytes of data being moved uh, into GCP and running that scale of cluster. And, uh, the highlight was like our network and our capability that we provide with our networking stack allows you to have this decoupling of storage and compute 
that really makes it easy to manage the whole environment, reduce the costs and all. So we are seeing tremendous growth with folks like Twitter, Yahoo's of the world, but also a lot of enterprise customers that are, that are using, uh, using the platform. So with that, let me uh, invite uh, Irene Omar, who is the deputy CEO for uh, uh, Air Asia on the stage, to talk more about this. Hi, Irene, how are you? Hi, thank you. Uh, can you just do a quick introduction about you, your role, and tell us a bit more about AirAsia? Sure. Um, AirAsia is the largest low-cost carrier in Asia, so we started back in 2001. Uh, we've just two aircraft. We carried about, about 20,000 passengers. And now, 16 years later, we have over 230 aircraft. Wow. And over the years, we have carried over 500 million passengers. And this year, we're looking at about 90 million passengers that we're carrying per year. So we've grown very fast. We have bases in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia or ASEAN is our backyard. And the reason why we are focused in building that market there is because it has over 600 million population base the third largest after China and India. And it has a very young population base with about a median age of 28, 29 years old. 50% of the population is under 30, 70% is under 40, 50% of the population is, uh, live in urban areas. And um, it's one of the fastest growing GDP in the world um, and one of the fastest growing middle income earners in the world. So this is where us as a low cost carrier is fantastic opportunity to grow the population. And if you look at the geographical landscape of Southeast Asia, it's surrounded by water. And, um, and that's where we feel there's a lot of opportunity to learn about the population, to grow further and build other business opportunities apart from just running an airline. So, uh, tremendous growth, right? Within two to three years, from two planes to 230, I guess now. Yeah. Um, what were the key challenges you were facing? And then uh, tell us more about what were the business challenges and uh, how are you using uh, Google Cloud for some of those? I think that the key challenge is because we have um, operations in various countries um, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, and recently in India and also Japan. Um, and um, we're looking at getting data from all over, uh, from various systems or so forth, basically. So we have data coming from our booking system. 80% of our booking goes through um, our internet and our mobile app, unlike other airlines, which is the other way around. Um, and then we have data coming from our aircraft and from our engines. And we use our aircraft uh, in, in, in the most efficient and we maximize the, the utilization rate um, the A320 that we use, we fly 14 hours a day, and we have 25 minutes turn around so that we can wow. fit in as many sectors as we can. So if you look at the whole group, it's about departing flights is about 1,500 per day, um, and we're looking at departing passengers about almost 300,000 per day. So there's a lot of data coming there, and it's really important when you are running an efficient operations, you need it to be precise, yeah. and you need something that's scalable and accurate um, um, so that we'll be able to understand those data better and be able to focus more on serving our consumers better. So the data that we need is really more on how do we improve the consumer's experience and the revenue that we can get from them and be able to provide the right kind of products and offerings for them. And how do we use this data to improve the overall operational efficiency oh. um, of our operations and so that we reach productivity in the most efficient way and be able to um, focus more of our efforts into uh, looking at the insights of not only just our operations, but also the behavior of our consumers so we can provide better products, offerings, and so forth. Got it. And I know you use BigQuery and uh, uh, Data Studio and all the other tools in Google Cloud. Are there key metrics you can share with us that have been uh, having, like, where you have seen re really growth or, or savings that can you share with some of the things yeah. in the audience? So I'm also in charge of digital transformation. Yeah. So the key thing is for us to uh, integrate all those data coming from various sources. Um, and to be able to combine those data and make meaningful algorithm out of it. Um, and what we have found, even though we only probably use less than 20% of the data that we have already combined, is that the conversion rate of, um, of the revenues or, or consumer has doubled 
Oh, and wow. that, you know, every 1% conversion rate actually increased the revenue by about 50 million US dollars and so forth. And what we have seen also, because we're able to predict better in terms of our operations, in terms of maintenance and so forth, we reduce the number of aircraft on ground. And that means it's better experience for our passengers and so forth. And we have seen that the cost has probably reduced by at least 10% or so. And that's actually wow. quite big in our operations um, of running an airline. And that's amazing, especially in airline where, the, as you said, the operational cost is heavy. So 10% saving, doubling the conversion rate, and you're just using 20% of the data. Yes, so. it's probably a little bit less than that because we just started only about a few years, a couple of years ago, and that's a lot to do. So it's very key to be able to streamline all those um, in BigQuery, and it's a powerful tool that allows us to be scalable and be able to work faster and be more focused on the requirements of our uh, consumers and so forth. Yeah, That's great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Awesome results. And I'm looking forward to what we can do together as you get to 20 to 30 to 100% of the data as you start analyzing it. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. Thank you. So that's about uh, uh, Air Asia. Let's talk about there are four key areas that we have we focus on normally when we talk to our customers when when they're using the uh, the different portfolio of solutions that we have. One is uh, of course modernizing the data warehouses, and we'll talk more about that. Analyzing streaming data, which is super critical as organizations are collecting massive amounts of events, event data from different places, click stream to IoT devices. Uh, streaming is streaming data and, and processing streaming data is super critical in organizations. Running open source software and, of course, visualizing and, and uh, uh, using the data in a visual manner is critical for organizations. Let's talk about BigQuery for a second. BigQuery is actually cloud-scale data warehouse. It's a natively built, if you haven't read Dremel paper, you should check it out. Um, it's ground up build data warehouse from the scratch. It's cloud scale. You can do petabyte scale queries within seconds. Um, it's uh, support standard SQL. You can actually get started with it at no cost. There is a free tier that's available. Uh, how many of you actually use BigQuery here? Great. There are a lot of people who don't. So uh, my recommendation would be you should go check it out. It will take you a couple of minutes to go actually bring your data in and start analyzing, as I said completely serverless, you don't have to worry about infrastructure, bring data in and start analyzing. That's the key thing. It's highly secure, it's, uh, we encrypt the data at rest, uh, it's highly available, and then uh, uh, real-time streaming is native to BigQuery. You can stream uh, hundreds of thousands of events directly into BigQuery and then actually analyze it in, in, uh, uh, at the same time. Uh, so that's super critical. So one of the announcements you heard today morning was uh, Rajan talking about BigQuery ML. The key thing in this was, the two big challenges we started hearing from our customers was, it's great to use BigQuery, massive amount of data, bring all the data in, but if you want to do any machine learning, you have to move that data out. And then if you have uh, seen some numbers, like 80% of data scientists spend time in data preparation, moving data around, and doing testing of the, of the models and all. So our thing was, how do you reduce that time by making machine learning available in the data warehouse instead of moving data to machine learning engine, why can't I move machine learning engine closer to data? So that was the whole premise of that. The second thing was skill set gap. In industry, we just don't have that many PhD data scientists to go to advanced machine learning. So our thing was, can we just leverage the skill our audience already has, which is SQL, and then make machine learning available to them in SQL? So that's exactly what we have tried to do is, uh, BigQuery ML is nothing but uh, SQL-based uh, uh, like machine learning model creation within BigQuery. If you have BigQuery, you're already using SQL to analyze data. You have queries ready. You understand your data. Just write two lines of uh, code on top of it. Create model. What type of model you want. We can auto-detect models if you want. Uh, and then just give us the input and what you want to predict. And for prediction, you're just saying, like, you know, select ml.predict, and you can get the predictions out. So that's how easy it is uh, that, to do uh, uh, to machine learning uh, in within uh, BigQuery. One of the things, if you, uh, if you saw earlier today, was 20th Century Fox, where uh, they talked about how they were able to predict what audience would are more likely to come back to a movie, uh, uh, to come back to the newer movie that they're launching. I want to take a different example right now with Geotab. So why don't I invite uh, Neil, can you please come on the stage and help us understand what Geotab does? Come. 
Thanks, Neil. Nice to be here. So can you do a quick introduction of yourself and tell us a bit more about uh, Geotab? Sure. Um, Geotab is a global leader in vehicle telematics. Many people ask, what is vehicle telematics? We have a little device that collects data out of a vehicle. We are in 1.2 million vehicles. We collect all that data, and then we analyze it at massive scale. Um, so we collect information about where the vehicle is, how fast it's moving, how the engine's performing, fuel consumption information, whether you are going over a pothole, whether you slammed on brakes. And so you can just imagine the opportunities that we have to analyze that data, to deliver results to our customers using you know, products like BigQuery um, and machine learning um, you know, are really massive. And so that, that's really what we do. Awesome. Can you share more about your current existing infrastructure before you went into BigQuery ML? What kind of technology do you use from uh, Google Cloud? How does the business do? And then your transition to BigQuery ML, we can discuss. Sure. We, we think of you know, our relationship with Google as our competitive advantage. We have more than 500 servers in GCE um, that process the data. Every single piece of data that the organization generates is actually pushed up into Google BigQuery. And we're a massive user of Google ML and TensorFlow. Um, we use Dataproc. We use um, products like Kubernetes. Um, and anything that gets announced by Google, we very keenly look at. Because uh, really, the, the benefit is, and, and it was a, it's an understated problem, is that you know, when you, you, you first you start collecting the data, you have it in one place. The next part, point is if you want to leverage AI, ML, you have to have that ML close to where the data is. Otherwise, you spend your life just moving data around. And so you know, it's been a great relationship and a great partnership. Uh, and I know you've been involved with BigQuery ML since we announced our alpha. So I also know you have a demo. So why don't you tell us what you're going to show in the demo, and then uh, what audience are we targeting, and then uh, show us the demo then? Sure, I'll do that. Um, just to kind of level set, uh, we do have probably the most comprehensive and largest big data set of vehicles in the world. And as I mentioned before, this data set is very, very rich. It has, you know, we know the t ambient air temperature, air pressures. We know whether you know, it's a dangerous intersection. We know a tremendous amount of data. So, uh, one of the things that I'm going to show you here today is how we have an add-in into our, our standard product, our fleet management product. But this, is, this one's focused more around smart city. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use ML to predict outcomes um, for safety based on weather. So I'll get to it, and I'll show you how that all fits together and how that works. Great, Neil. Uh, while you're getting set up on that, uh, the key thing is uh, there's another uh, key thing we'll be uh, launching today is uh, it's... Uh, 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 GIS Alpha, so BigQuery will natively support GIS capabilities like GIS data types within, uh, within the data warehouse. We'll talk more about it a bit later, and there's a detailed session at 3.15 that we're going to talk about, but I will hand it over to Neil to talk more about the demo. Okay, super. So we'll get the demo up. All right, we're up. So what you're seeing over here is a view inside our product. Um, as I mentioned before, this is an add-in. This is one of hundreds of add-ins that are available in the product. This is one really cool one where we're leveraging uh, Google ML and Google uh, GIS, the, the BigQuery GIS features that have, have just been announced here that we just talked about um, in order to get some really interesting data. And this is just starting to scratch the surface of where we can go with this, and you can understand. So what you're seeing on the left-hand side is a view of the dangerous intersections in the Chicago area, so over the last two weeks. And essentially, the hot spots are areas where it's more dangerous. Now you ask, how could we possibly tell that? Well, we know where there's about 100,000 accidents a year happening in our pool of vehicles. We know where people are slamming on brakes. So if we aggregate that data, we can then look at where are people having these accidents and where are people slamming on brakes or dangerous lane changes um, and swerving and whatnot. Um, so what happened is the, the big data team, um, which is actually sitting here today, what they did is they took the data and then they said, let's use the public data set that was available in Google BigQuery around weather data. And so we know for a particular date and time, for a particular location, what is the weather in that location. And they used 250 different metrics to analyze and compute what can we tell about how weather impacts safety. And so they ran this experiment, and I'm going to show you some results of that. So we'll drop, let's say we drop the temperature down to you know, around freezing. And, um, Let's choose snow, and I'm going to run the predictive an analysis now live. And then what we see is actually really interesting. Some of the areas that were dangerous before are still dangerous, but there's been a big change in the pattern. And so we are seeing things look remarkably different. And if we zoom into areas now, now we can start seeing, well, where are those dangerous intersections? Let's just take one little area over here where I'm going to zoom into, and we'll find that whenever it snows, we seem to have a dangerous area near a school. And so we might consider what is happening here. Maybe 
the parents are waiting across the road to pick up the kids, and it's snowing, and so the kids are running across the road. And so you get, get the circumstance. Or perhaps vehicles break down there. But the point is, by leveraging ML, by leveraging this data, you know, cities can now you know, look at what, what the infrastructure is and change the way the roads are set up in order to keep, keep everybody safer. And this is really just starting to scratch the surface of what you can do when, when you leverage such a powerful tool like Google BigQuery and Google ML. Thank you, Neil. This is awesome. Thanks a lot. I think we are, the Thank key you. thing is just making the city smarter and just having that kind of impact. And you can actually do model generation and prediction so fast. It's just going to expedite the whole, uh, whole solution creation. Absolutely. One of the key things was how quickly our team was able to put this together. There was no coding involved. There's no Kubernetes. There's no spinning up magnitudes of servers. <laughs> we love really Kubernetes too, to but <laughs> we are SQL people. We love SQL. So. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Thanks a lot. There is actually a session at 3.15 to go deep dive into the GeoDAP solution, the GIS capabilities. Uh, if you're interested in GIS uh, data types and all, that would be a good session to go to later today. Uh, other than that, we have also worked with our partners to go ahead and give an integrated experience for this, uh, the BigQuery ML uh, capability. So Looker, for example, has this end-to-end -end workflow that they have built within Looker where you can actually go ahead and pull out a data set, see it in uh, Looker views, actually run a prediction, uh, run a, create a model within that, visualize a prediction, and then actually go ahead and uh, fine tune your model from the Looker UI itself. So we will be working with more partners to bring these kind of integrated capabilities. So analysts who are using these tools can, uh, like you know, from within the tools, actually do um, uh, leverage BigQuery ML. Uh, uh, from, from these tools and make it really easy for creating these models, visualizing the models and all. So yeah, looking forward to this uh, uh, going forward. A um, Couple of things in BigQuery ML, you have linear and more logistical regression models that are already available. The beta is available, so please go try it. Give us some more feedback uh, in, the, in the beta world. A couple of other things, we are also announcing clustering beta is coming. Uh, again, I won't be able to go in details of partitioning, clustering, Key capabilities, just think about it this way. You can do a petabyte scale query from BigQuery. You could do it like two years back. You can do it now. But with partitioning plus clustering, you can reduce the cost drastically because we, uh, the, the queries are going to be way more efficient. We only access the data, what is required within that cluster or within that partition. So partitioning plus clustering is going to help you make your queries way more efficient and actually reduce cost drastically if you're using on-demand pricing model. There's a detailed session at 3.15 by Jordan Tigani today. Uh, you should absolutely go if you're interested in, in that topic uh, later today. There are some, there's some amazing demos Jordan does uh, uh, in, that, uh, in that session. Again, as we just uh, quickly touched upon, GIS Alpha is available today. So think about the, the scenario that we were hearing from our customers was all around, for example, we are in Masconi Center. How many, uh, uh, within two mile radius, how many taxis are available uh, of this region. If you want to do that kind of query, historically it's been like really difficult to do, and with availability of GIS features, you can do that kind of queries directly inside, uh, inside BigQuery now. Uh, we have some new connectors that are going live. Uh, one of the other key things we are launching is our, our uh, new BigQuery UI. Uh, which will give you uh, capabilities. It's, it looks better, and it also has some one-click experiences to go into Data Studio and do visualization. Um, and then uh, we'll quickly take a look at uh, Google Sheets integration that's available. So this is an example. Along with the GIS capability of like, uh, the, the core data types and the ability to query, we also have a visual tool that we are launching which allows you to go ahead and visually fire a query and look at the points on the map. Because if you're doing like a query around hey, show me all the points that are in two mile radius of another point, how are you going to visualize it? It's really difficult. So what we worked with our Earth Engine team at Google and have this visual tool that gives you ability to visualize that data. So uh, please take a look at that. Uh, again, with Sheets, as I said, a lot of our customers use Sheets for, for analysis and doing uh, move data into it. Now with Google Sheets, you have a connector for BigQuery. From within there, you can just click, connect to your BigQuery instance, pull data in, and start analyzing that, visualizing it out of the box. So uh, one of the other key capabilities, making it easy to go do that analysis, connect to the data sets and all. So that's been one of our big themes for, uh, for, uh, for this year. So that's BigQuery. How do you make it easy to go ahead and analyze data on BigQuery? 
Uh, streaming analytics, we, I touched upon it earlier. Uh, we have a whole portfolio of products that allow you to do that. Like you can do millions of event collection from uh, using PubSub. Uh, Dataflow allows you to do large scale data processing. You can use Cloud ML or BigQuery uh, to go ahead and do analysis on top of that data, right? Uh, Brightcove is one of the best examples of this. They literally collect 75, uh, oh, sorry, 8,500 years of video per month. That's 7 billion events a day uh, is what they collect. And they use uh, Dataflow plus PubSub to go ahead and analyze those videos and, and uh, leverage some great insights from it. But it's not just the Brightcove. Uh, Traveloka uses it for e-commerce clickstream uh, collection and, and analyzing that. Qubit is another example where in retail they are doing point of sale analysis. Uh, amazing scenarios with Nintendo in in-game uh, analysis, in-game uh, utilization of consumables, and then also Nest for IoT data. So any kind of large scale event collection, processing, analytics, you can use PubSub, Dataflow uh, uh, for that. Um, we are actually announcing few enhancements in that space. Uh, one of the big things that we are doing is uh, uh, Python. Python is one of the fastest growing language in uh, GitHub, if you just look at all the commits and all. Uh, and we wanted to make it easy for our Python developers to do streaming. So now we are going to enable Python streaming capability with Beam so customers can actually build scalable data pipelines using, uh, using Python. So that's going in beta now, so customers can use that. Uh, we also have Dataflow uh, uh, streaming and shuffle capability. It will help you do large-scale data processing easily. Auto-scaling capabilities will come with it. There are detailed deep dive sessions on these that you should check out if you're interested. Uh, one of the other things we, were, uh, we have done is we have we've actually enhanced the performance on and uh, made our libraries much, efficient, much more efficient for PubSub in seven different languages that you can use. But in addition to that, we have a lot of customers who love Kafka. They're like, hey, I use Kafka already. I want to continue using it on GCP. What are, what are my options? So historically, you could just go ahead and deploy it yourself and manage it. But what we have now is with Confluent, we have a managed Kafka solution that's available. So if you want to go ahead and use a managed service for Kafka, you can just use Confluent Kafka on GCP. And that's, that's one of our... One of our strategies is, is to work with our partners to provide these end-to-end -end solutions that you can leverage as a, as a customer. So that, that's a, uh, it's already available that, that you, can, uh, you can use. One of the other things which is core to our strategy as well as uh, core belief is this, this um, open source and being an open cloud. And we fundamentally like, look at uh, things from Istio to Kubernetes that, that we are investing in. On our side, in big data world, we are investing a lot in, in um, uh, open source technology. Like, if you look at just big data roadmap, last 15 years, the amount of innovation that Google has driven and made available uh, before Google Cloud, we used to make this available as papers so that the industry could learn from all the research that we had done. Uh, everything from Dremel paper to uh, MapReduce to GFS, like all different papers. And then we also are building a lot of these products based on these, these technologies. Um, there are two key product areas that we have been investing in on, on open source side. Uh, one is Dataproc. It's managed Hadoop and Spark uh, uh, capability, as well as Composer. Composer is fascinating. Um, when it was in private alpha, we had more than 1,000 customers using it. I have no idea how do you keep it private, and then they have that many customers using it. So it just took off. It's based on Airflow, Apache Airflow, and it was just basically all the customers loved it, and we started seeing a tremendous uh, adoption of it. Uh, so we are announcing the GA for uh, Composer now, so it's already available. You should be able to use it. Major enhancements in, uh, in our uh, data proc side, uh, auto-scaling, uh, and custom packages. Custom packages allow you, with few clicks, to pick uh, top-level Apache projects that you want to go ahead and deploy now. In data proc, that's, uh, that's interesting. And auto-scaling based on your resource needs automatically will scale your Hadoop clusters, uh, Hadoop and Spark clusters uh, on your behalf. And then, of course, uh, we announced a few weeks back that Hortonworks now uh, supports their infrastructure on GCP natively. So you can use HDP or HDF directly on, on GCP. Uh, with that, let me call uh, upon Michael from uh, Blue Apron to talk about how they are using, uh, uh, using GCP. Michael, welcome. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. good. Can you do a quick intro of yourself as well as the company, your role? 
Sure, absolutely. Uh, hey, everyone. I um, hope you're enjoying the second day of Next, like <laughs> I am. So uh, Blue Apron was founded six years ago with a um, rather modest goal. Um, and that goal was to re-envision how the food system worked in this country. Um, and so while we made some good progress, um, that is an audacious goal, as the visions are supposed to be. And we thought we can get at this vision by making home cooking more accessible, easier, um, more affordable for more people in this country. And in doing so, we could go out there, work with farmers, producers, and make sure that we were investing in sustainable agriculture, um, you know, humane ways to raise uh, livestock, all these different things. So basically, what we do is we send out proportioned seasonal uh, ingredients to you in a box with the recipe to make those. And we are around millions of dinner tables in the US every single night, um, which is a privilege. Um, I'm one of them, so I love Blue Apron. Okay. Um, so uh, how is data analytics used at uh, Blue Apron? So one of the greatest privileges about working in food, I think, that I've learned is that people always want to tell you what they think. We don't have to really go out and solicit much <laughs> customer feedback. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, as I said, you're around people's dinner tables. It's a very personal moment, right? And it's, it's very intimate. And basically, I, you know, we have a responsibility to listen. And as I said, people will sure as, sure as hell tell us what they want in their recipes. Um, we were joking before uh, that all the recipes have kale in them in the summer. Don't <laughs> ask me to fix that. I can't fix that. Um, so data is a really core part of how we make our business decisions. Um, and that's not immediately obvious um, if you look at what we do. You think, oh, you ship a box of food. OK, so that's great. Um, but actually, we are looking at the customer life cycle at every stage, and we are ingesting data about what you like, what you um, you know, what recipes appeal to you, what photos appeal to you, what titles appeal to you, and we're building up a profile of what you like. Um, and as I said, people tell us how they feel. If you've ever written a comment on one of our recipes, know that a human being has read it. It's awesome. But we can do better, right? I, and, and, what, and what we think is we can build a virtuous cycle around what we're doing here and the vision with data. And the way that we, that we we think about doing that is, you know, just if we use an example of something that my team does a lot of, which is recipe recommendations, obviously. Helping people make sure we put the right recipe in the box that you'll like, obviously. So if we have better recommendations, we have better forecasting, we have better purchasing, we are going out and sourcing the right ingredients and the right proteins and the right dry goods that meet our needs. That is reducing food waste. It is cutting out another part of the, uh, um, a part, another like middleman in the step, right? The supermarket, and you know, if we did get better at that, we end up saving, you know, thousands and thousands of tons of wasted food, right? So every like small change uh, is really important for us in that, and in, you know, at scale, it makes a huge difference. Uh, and. Tell me more about your philosophy around open source software and how you use it and stuff like that within the organization. Right. So, I, you know, I, 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 we're on the record as using a laundry list of GCP services. Um, you know, our enterprise data warehouse is um, BigQuery. We use um, Dataflow uh, for our streaming processing. We use Dataproc for our batch machine learning. Uh, we use GCS for our data lake, for our prepared features, our trained models, all of this stuff. Um, and, but a lot of that orchestration we use Airflow for. We have been using Airflow from more or less day one that data engineering existed at Blue Apron. And it's incredibly important for us because it helps us ingest information from outside sources. It helps us you know, run other like batch ETL processes. It helps us run our, you know, batch machine learning models, all of that stuff. Um, and it's actually a key piece of how we, we end up actually serving our batch machine learning uh, predictions as well, 
um, you know, we, we use Airflow to compute, you know, 122 million recommendations every day. And wow. we load those up into a little level DB artifact that we serve in memory from our, uh, from our services, which is great because it means we can serve 122 million recommendations daily with, you know, about 15 microsecond latency. That's pretty good. Wow. We can work with that. That's awesome. Um, right, but open source is a huge part of that, right? We got burned early on by, um, I think this story should be familiar to everyone who's worked as a startup, maybe. We got burned early on by vendor lock-in on, on uh, certain clouds. Okay. And, you know, we've been committed to open source from the beginning, but that really made us realize, oh, you know, we have to take open source seriously as an engineering organization and, you know, not end us up, not end up in that position again. You know, we're not a big, you know, we're not a big engineering organization. Data engineering for us, we're only 15 people. We got, you know, we got to work on what we have competitive advantages in, and that is not running Airflow. Um, our data operations team managed to do the most recent Airflow 1.9 update on our cluster. Um, yeah, well, uh, I will, they, are not, uh, they did not sleep well that week. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Um, so we don't, you know, if we, we don't want to get locked in and we want to write it once, run it everywhere in our hybrid cloud, and, you know, when Google is saying we are committed to an open cloud, that's very important for us. And, that's very important because, you know, you can compete for our business on any other dimension, yep. but it's not you're locked into our product, yep. right? And that's, that matters a lot, and that, like, that's a good signal to us, you know. Beam, uh, uh, Beam, Spark, TensorFlow, right? These are all things that we have big investments in, and, you know, if it's open source, we can move it anywhere we like, and we're not... We know. hope you never move them, but well, I get it. You have an option of moving them wherever you want. I could. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Michael. Uh, any other key metrics that you have seen or business results you would like to share before, uh, before we wrap up? Um, you can't ask me that on the week of an earnings release. Um, but, <laughs> okay. um, no, I mean, basically, you know, we have seen a huge amount of, um, a huge amount of uptick in engagement with our product and you know when we give customers more ways to give us feedback yeah. we get even more feedback so it's you know it is a really virtuous cycle there um, and we're also using those insights to help our culinary team and our amazing chefs basically plan recipes better right. so that's that's a new exciting frontier for us is using AI to actually provide feedback from what we know our customers will like so that on the menu are more things that you know there's something for everyone and things that people are going to love that, that much Perfect. more. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Great. Thanks. Thank you. So as you saw, when I talk to customers across the board, this whole thing around open cloud actually resonates a lot, uh, especially keeping the expertise customers have in Spark, Hadoop, as well as uh, with Beam, what we have done, and, um, and, and other areas. Uh, the fourth topic I want to talk about quickly was visualizing and activating your data. The key thing is self-service BI is one of the priorities in various organizations. Uh, how do you explore your data yourself, like enable your uh, users to go ahead and explore the data, as well as do collaborative data-driven decision-making are the topics that come up in every conversation I have with, with customers. Uh, so one of the things, if you haven't used Data Studio, it's our... Uh, um, uh, BI tool that's available, highly collaborative. It's, it's basically built around collaboration. Um, the key thing is, uh, with the new BigQuery UI capability that, that I announced, uh, if you use a new UI, you can literally do a one-click from your query, click once, and directly do a visualization and data exploration. So you can go explore what data set it is. You can blend that data with other sources, like AdWords or something, in, in uh, uh, pull that data in. And you can actually go ahead and... Uh, create a report out of it within seconds. Like literally, uh, you don't need a specialist to go do that. Additionally, we also have pre-built templates that are available now. So you can literally go ahead and say, there's actually a template I found on cloud billing. So if you want to just visualize your billing on cloud, Google Cloud, you can actually have a template for that. Or you want to analyze your AdWords stuff, you have a template for that. So really good capabilities. We, are also, we also have a data visualization uh, developer preview that's available, where you can do a D3-based visualizations, uh, uh, create custom visualizations. The other area that we have invested uh, with, uh, with one of our partners, Trifecta, is 
uh, the data prep solution. So a lot of our customers want to do data wrangling as analysts want to go do that visually. Uh, data prep actually allows you to go ahead and visualize your data, which may be in BigQuery, figure out what anomalies are there in the data, clean that data up, and store it back. As we are getting ready for our GA with, uh, with that tool uh, within the next uh, few months, the key thing is we have focused a lot on getting the feedback from beta, and we'll have some key capabilities available. One big area of enhancements we have done is all around team-based data wrangling. How do you share your recipes, copy and um, share and copy your flows? How do you go ahead and uh, uh, like, you know, uh, reuse your custom sample recipes and stuff like that? So a lot of focus on that. Uh, focus more on productivity, like how do you go ahead and have quick shortcuts to the popular items and all. And then we have a completely new uh, comprehensive design uh, which looks much better and is very more efficient. So that's one of the areas. Uh, before uh, I jump into the next one, so one of the other things, uh, somebody told me a while back, it's not, uh, being good is not enough, you should also do good. So we have been working with some nonprofits to see how we can help uh, democratize our analytics and machine learning capabilities in the, uh, uh, in the nonprofit community. And so uh, let's run the video of how precision medicine is using it, and then I will talk more about that. Can we take it over? My name is uh, Robert Tabs. And five and a half years ago, my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I knew none of the medications were working the entire time was a downward spiral. And also lost my grandfather about 25 years ago to the disease. My family at the time felt like it was already too late to change the trajectory of the disease. And it breaks my heart when I hear the same stories today. The mission for Foundation for Precision Medicine is to bring AI and healthcare together to detect Alzheimer's early. If you can detect Alzheimer's very early on, that is when the disease is most susceptible to treatment. The data that we have access to are anonymized electronic healthcare records. We needed a HIPAA compliant environment, which is why we use Google Cloud. We're dealing with hundreds of variables on millions of patients, which generate billions of lines of data. Google Cloud enables us to scale our operations, and with BigQuery ML, we are able to develop machine learning models faster and utilize our entire data. Being a nonprofit, we rely on our volunteers across the US, and Google Cloud really enabled us to do that. We wanted them to be able to apply machine learning on the data and look at trends themselves to empower them to come up with more innovative approaches to change the progression of the disease. This work is so important to me because it helps us address this devastating illness that has no cure. I heard somewhere that they said, um, don't forget that dots on the plot are people. And uh, we really take that seriously. So great example of how precision medicine is using the data analytics capability, BigQuery ML, uh, along with other uh, BigQuery features to go ahead and uh, uh, do an uh, advancement in, uh, in their area. So what we were able to do was, today we are announcing Data Solutions for Change. It's a, it's a program that we are launching for nonprofits across the world where they can go ahead and on need basis uh, get access to Google Cloud credits. Uh, along with self-training resources and hands-on enablement. As I said, our goal is how do we democratize analytics and machine learning for nonprofits around the world and give uh, these capabilities in hands of organizations that want to do good in, in the world. Uh, so that's, that's launching today. Um, the other one more thing that we are launching is Visualize uh, 2030. Uh, so this is a collaboration with World Bank, United Nations, uh, UN Foundation, and uh, other affiliate organizations where uh, we want to drive uh, awareness and actions around the UN uh, sustainable uh, development goals. There are 17 goals that are, uh, within the next 12 years we want to meet. Uh, and so we basically, this is a storytelling competition for uh, uh, students uh, the grad students around the world, where they can go ahead and submit, create visual stories and insights and actions based on Data Studio and the public data sets in the BigQuery. So Big, BigQuery has 70 plus public data sets that's available that you can go use, start analyzing today. 
So in this, you can go ahead and create these visual stories and then submit it by end of September. And then we will announce the winners at um, the UN World uh, Data Forum in Dubai in October. Um, so, so this is one of the things that we are announcing today. Uh, we want the next generation students who are like, earlier we were talking about 80 million students using, uh, uh, using G Suite. We want to extend similar capabilities on data analytics for this, this audience so that they can start analyzing, visualizing, and, and coming up with insights, uh, insights to go solve. Uh, along with that, uh, one of the things I do want to talk about is our partner ecosystem is super critical to us. Uh, we have partners across the board, like from ingestion. We have some amazing partners. If you want to get data into BigQuery or different analytics products that we have, we have amazing partners that, that provide those solutions. Uh, we have data integration partners. Uh, we have partners for visualization. Uh, you saw a previous example of Looker. Tableau is a big partner in that. Click. Uh, there are a bunch of partners that provide BI tools as well as a lot of SI partners coming on board to help you with your various engagements that, that you may have. Um, so that's key. Um, Google is a leader in the insights as a platform, um, for uh, a platform as a service uh, from Forrester. Uh, and I'm hoping we'll uh, be recognized more and more in, in different uh, upcoming, uh, upcoming reports that come out. Uh, the key thing from me is there's a lot more information on big data that's available on the solution place. Please uh, take a look at that. There are amazing sessions. I highlighted the GIS one, uh, the deep dive on, on clustering and all with Enterprise Data Warehouse, Beyond Enterprise Data Warehouse by Jordan Tigani. There are a lot of other good sessions on the big data topics uh, in the conference. Please uh, attend them and give us more feedback. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>